Perfect. Woo. All right, and with that, uh, Michael's going to talk to you about eradicating hepatitis C with bioterrorism. So one more round of applause for Michael. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm scared too, all the time, of losing the health that I have. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to not know what's wrong with your body and to have to go shop for a stranger who has the authority to maybe or maybe not give you what you need. I know what it feels like to know what's wrong with your body and to know what you need and to be told you can't have it because the infrastructure has failed and it's not available. I know what it feels like to be told that you can't get it because it's not legal in the place where you are. I know what it feels like to be told that you can't have it because the doctor doesn't share your opinion. And perhaps worst of all, I know what it's like to be told you can have it only to realize that you can't afford it. I know this happened to you. It never should have occurred. This is wrong. And I hope to show you all some tools so that it doesn't ever have to happen again. Sorry, there may or may not be some slides, but uh, what you're about to see is a photograph of me, hopefully. But I'll keep talking. The photograph you're about to see, you'll notice I looked different then. I had long hair. I was overseas. Three days later, I had no hair anywhere on my body. And three weeks later, I had all new skin. And I decided to be magnanimous and not show you how it came off. But it was rough and it was ugly. Then there's another picture. I'm recovering in a hospital. I have an IV in my hand. A tumor had just been removed from my body. This was the first picture, is it up? You guys see it? Here I am three days later. Here I am three weeks later. Here I am in the hospital. Well, somewhere I'm in the hospital. And they'd removed a tumor from my body that was invisible on the MRI. And the only reason it got removed is because I insisted on it. There's another picture of me in the hospital. Oh, I can see my slides. Sorry, guys. I don't know if it's <laughs> still getting a black screen, but it's all right. There's another picture of me recovering in the same hospital because I had to have another operation, also under general anesthesia, just to prepare for the other surgery. Now, the important thing to note, and what I'm trying to impart here, is that most medications you can make a better, cheaper version of yourself at home. Anybody can. It's entirely doable. Now, if the slides won't come up for whatever reason, I'll talk through it. But there are a handful of tools that you need to go through this. The first thing that you need to do is you need some chemistry. Now, most people kind of cower. Chemistry seems hard. It seems like a specialized thing. Well, sure, if you're doing research chemistry, yeah, that's why there's a PhD in it, of course. But if you just need to operate it, 
Similar to the difference between building a computer and using a computer, it's significantly easier. It says a lot about the state of humanity when we develop all of these things and don't deliver them. Sorry, I just gotta bounce back to this slide too. This is so important. Those research chemists that are doing biochemistry, they're doing medicine, they're doing incredibly important things. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so sophisticated. And yeah, there's a reason that they get PhDs in it. But if all you're trying to do is pirate something, that's doable and it can be automated. I believe this. That's why I'm here. Hacking is important for the world. It saves lives. All of you know this. You've seen it. This is just a little more direct. It can happen with anything. You take something and you use it for a purpose for which it was not intended so that you are no longer gatekept against access. This is why we do what we do and I know you all understand this. Yeah. Knowledge belongs to all of humanity. I believe this with every fiber of my being. There have been moments in history where economics and morality have come to a head and the economists have said, you can't have that. I'm sorry, it's not moral. It's the way our economy works. And the moralists have come back and said, that's not good enough. It happened in this country with slavery. People said, people can't be property. That is not acceptable. And the economists said, yes, it's really unfortunate and it's kind of old, but that's how our economy runs. And the moralists came back and said, that's not good enough. And similarly today, people are dying every day because of intellectual property law, making it so that people do not have access to the medicines they need. And the economists say, oh, I know it's an old system. I know it's being abused. It's kind of unfortunate, but there are trillions of dollars circling the world. We can't just pull the rug out from under that. And there are some of us who are saying, that's not good enough. I know you all believe in the right to repair. I do too. I believe in the right to repair for your body. And this is not a new idea. It used to be that everybody was involved in their own health. The notion that you can't manage your own health is fairly new. Gates have been put up saying, you can't do this. You're practicing medicine without a license. You're not allowed. But if you come to the authority, we'll sell it back to you. Not acceptable. You need to become involved in your own health. You can't just follow doctor's orders. It's not good enough anymore. I don't know if it ever was. We know that this is not an excuse in wartime. Why is it still an excuse when you're dealing with your health? It shouldn't be. I'm gonna say this again. You can make most medicines yourself at home and you can make them better, I'm not kidding, better and cheaper. Now, we're gonna to have to look at how. I wanna do a quick poll here. How many people know somebody who owns a cat who is also either immunocompromised or pregnant? Show of hands real quick. Yeah, okay, a couple. Next, how many people know somebody who has an allergy that sends them into anaphylactic shock? Oh yeah, plenty, okay, cool. How many people know somebody who has hepatitis C? All right, couple, all right, I'm gonna remember you. How many people have a uterus and are child free by choice? Cool. All right, uh, fewer than I thought, but all right. Who remembers this guy? This is Martin Shkreli. And what you're seeing right now is him lying to Congress. He was CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. And what he was lying about was the pricing structure of Daraprim, pyrimethamine, an anti-toxoplasmosis drug. It had been $13.50 a pill and he changed the price to $750 a pill. If you calculate this out, a full course of treatment is just south of $19,000. This is his phone number. 
I called him from stage at Hope in 2016. He didn't answer, but he called me back a few hours later. Of course, he got hauled off to prison a while after that. Here's what we did. We took exception to this. We found a new synthesis pathway. It had one step fewer. It was much more efficient. There were greater margins of error, and there was greater purity and yield. So we made some. Here I am at that same conference throwing pills to the audience that cost me a quarter to make each. And you can make these things too. Making pills is easy. If you have active pharmaceutical ingredient, just pack it into caplets, measure it out. Everybody can do this. It's not difficult. And here's what a course of treatment looks like. Now, it's amazing there was so much outrage around what he did, and yet, the pricing structure still has not changed, but you can make a full course of treatment for $80. Now, who said they knew somebody who had a cat and was pregnant? You want it? I'll toss it out. Keep that person healthy. Keep that person safe. More to come. This is Heather Bresch. She is, can you guess, lying to Congress. She was CEO of Milan Pharmaceuticals. And she was lying about the pricing structure of the EpiPen. I know everybody remembers this one. It was $60 for a pair. And then she decided it was going to be $604 for a pair. We presented about this in 2018 and I called her at this number. It might still work. You can try it. <laughs> she didn't answer. We decided to make our own version. It's not a complicated thing. You take an auto injector that's designed for needle phobic diabetics. You put in a small syringe, a large needle, and a vial of epinephrine. You can make one too. This costs $30. Additionally, you can test it to see if it works, and you can reload it for $3. You just need a new needle, a new syringe, and a new hit of epi. And again, after all of this time, the pricing structure has not shifted. There is no leverage to change these prices. You can make your own. It's not hard. Now, who said they had a friend who had anaphylactic shock? <sighs> You want it? All right, here, pass it back. <laughs> Keep that person healthy. Keep that person safe. And make more. It's not hard. And then there was the time that these nine robed creeps decided they were going to ruin... Sorry, hang on. And then there was this time that these nine robe creeps decided they were gonna just ruin everything for everyone by saying you couldn't have the medicine you wanted if you happened to have a uterus. We thought this wasn't cool either. And at Hope in 2022, we figured out a way to dope business cards with abortion drugs. It's fairly simple, and you can do it too. Here's all you need. You get some active pharmaceutical ingredients, some Everclear, a blender, and a pipette. Then all you do is you put in the Everclear, you put in the powder, you blend it up, and then you take the pipette and you put six dots on a business card. Here I am two years ago at DEF CON at a house not far from here, making about 200 on a table. Here's all you do. You lay them out, that, that top one's special edition, you can't get that anymore. You put six dollops on a card. Those are the three doses that you need to induce an abortion. You let it dry, it curls up like this, and then you put it in a baggie. It is super simple. Here's the entire table, and then you bag them up in the morning. And then, maybe you put them places because it's just the size of a card, maybe in the family planning section, in a, in a drugstore. Or maybe at your local public library, you find an appropriate volume that somebody who might be in need might find, and you just, just, uh, just slip it in there. 
And again, the recipe you just saw is for 100 cards. So maybe you even get really creative and decide that another third place that people go to who might have trouble getting access to these sorts of things. Uh, I mean, up to you. The Guttmacher Institute estimates that it's about $500 if you want an abortion through traditional channels. If you send away for mifepristone and misoprostol pills, it will cost you about $160. These cards, they cost 89 cents to make, including the printing of the cards and the baggies. You can afford to make these. And despite all the outrage around all of it, this pricing structure and the access hasn't shifted much. Now, for some of you who recognize patterns, we'll anticipate the next question, which is, who would like my business card? <laughs> who wants this? Yes, I'm not gonna make assumptions, but I think you don't have a uterus. Which, yeah, all right. Here, will you, will you pass that back? And there may or may not be a bunch of these stashed in ladies' rooms around. I don't know who put them there. This is hepatitis C. This is what we're talking about today. This is terrifying. And it's not common knowledge. It is more virulent than HIV. It is more widespread than HIV. And it is more lethal than HIV. And it is a very clever virus. If you want to get into the molecular biology of it, it's incredible. It is awe-inspiring. This is Savaldi, also known as Sofosbuvir. This molecule makes magic happen. It actually goes in and interdicts in the replication process when hepatitis C is trying to make more of it. Here is the enzyme that allows hepatitis C to make more by replicating RNA. And here is Savaldi inside of the binding pocket doing what one of our chemists referred to as fucking shit up. <laughs> this is not just a drug that's helpful. This drug will actually eradicate the virus from your body. This is the first time this has ever been done. If you have a virus, either your body manages it or you have to continuously take antivirals for the rest of your life. You can actually be hepatitis C free with this drug. It's not just a treatment. You take one pill a day for 12 weeks and hepatitis C is gone from your body. What is the catch? These pills cost $1,000 a piece. And for those of you who are good with arithmetic, you will notice that this is $84,000 that it costs. And it will come as no surprise to the Americans in the audience that insurance companies aren't super hot to pay for it. Let's look at how shitty hepatitis is. This is how it's gone the last few years. Two seminal moments I'd like to point out. Here's where Savaldi was invented. Now, those of you who are familiar with the American medical system and how drugs go will know that it takes a while between invention and approval, and indeed it did. But here's where it was approved. Maybe you noticed something kind of strange about the graph. Let's extend the data just a little bit, and you'll see taking it up to the current day, it's getting worse, not better. That's worth wondering about. Now, as some of you know, I'm a mathematician. I will not require any of you to do the integral to calculate the area under the curve here as to how many people died since it was invented. It was over five million between the invention of Savaldi and today, all of which could have been avoided if they had merely been given this course of treatment. And I take great exception to that. Right now, 
Almost 1% of the entire world has hepatitis C. It's closer to three quarters of a percent. But look around this room and do a quick back of the envelope. There are plenty of people right here who have it. Plenty unknowingly. Again, it is more virulent and more deadly than HIV. One and a half million people will get it this year. Some probably like, you know, later today if they get lucky. Hopefully it's fun in the process. Over a quarter of a million people will die of hepatitis C this year. A quarter of a million. And somebody dies every two minutes. How long have I been up here? When I talked about this five years ago, it was every three minutes. So again, not only is it getting worse, but it's getting worse faster. Now, usually when I start throwing these sorts of numbers out, people get a little depressed. And they ask, is there no hope? And I would like to quote one of my favorite superheroes. Oh, I will give you hope. And I ask only one thing in return. Now, you might not recognize this man, but his name is Daniel O'Day. Interesting last name to be talking about at a hacker conference. You figure somebody's gonna fuck with him, right? <laughs> he is, as you might guess, lying to Congress. He is CEO of Gilead Pharmaceuticals, and he is lying about the pricing structure of Savaldi, which, as mentioned previously, is $1,000 a pill, and is $84,000 for a full course of treatment. Oh man, I had such like a, like a climactic moment that I was building to. Like, like I was so excited for the next thing. If I can pull it off, uh, it'll be great. If not, it's like an NES, right? Everybody remembers this, it's a perfect trick. It should work every time. So, um, in the event that this doesn't work, I'll go a little further from memory. But um, we need to get back to the how. I've talked a lot about why, but there are tools that we have specifically that will help you through the entire process. At the top is the automation of the chemistry, and we have a tool for that, an actual way that you can automate the chemistry. Below that, there's a system that will build the instruction set that the automation system will run. No. Before that, sure you actually that. need to figure out how the synthesis is done. You need to figure out how to start with some material dying? and then work your way to your end product. And we have a tool for that as well. And of course, somewhere along the line, you have to figure out what you want to take for what's wrong. I don't see one, no. So, the first thing is called the Apothecary Microlab. And you're going to have to take it on faith, but I got beautiful pictures of it. There are automated lab reactors that are designed for chemistry. The way they work is fairly simple. There's a reaction chamber on the inside. Maybe There's a jacket through which liquid flows that allows the reaction chamber to maintain a particular temperature. There's a little paddle inside that will stir. And then there are these little injection systems on the top. Now, problem is, many. First, they're closed source, and they come with all the attendant problems with closed source systems. Number two, they're ridiculously expensive. If you want the most basic model, it's going to be over $5,000. And even if you have $5,000, you can't buy it unless you're a lab. Now, of course, there are ways around that, but why would you want to pay $5,000 for something that just Unfortunately. stirs, controls temperature, and injects reagents at a particular time. You think you could probably do that yourself, right? Well, I'm a very, very lucky man. I get to brag about some wonderful things that some brilliant people have managed to build, and I get to brag about it unabashedly because I didn't do it. But the Apothecary Microlab is something we've been working on for many years, and we have a new version that I like to call version 6, and it does all of these things. You have a small mason jar inside of a larger mason jar. 
There's fluid that circulates around that, oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> no. All right, moving on. There's a fluid that circulates around that regulates the temperature. You've got a stirring paddle that comes in. It's made of Teflon, so it's non-reactive. And you've got these tubes that pump things in. The design is somewhat complex. And one thing that I should mention is that tomorrow at 11 a.m. in the uh, creator, content creators stage, we'll be doing an extended version of this talk. It's on uh, in number two. And we will be going through and we will be demonstrating the actual tool. We will be going through, you will see it making medicines on stage. All of these online systems about which I'm about to speak, you'll be able to interact with in real time because uh, we were discouraged from having live demos on the main stage because, well, you know. <laughs> so, you'll also be able to request particular drugs. If there's a drug that you'd like to know how to make, We'll try and figure out a way on the fly, live. So please come on by, it'll be fun. So, then antecedent to the micro lab itself, we have a system called the recipe press. This is a graphical user interface that allows you to take a procedure for making a chemical reaction happen and you get to then input it and it will generate the code so that the system runs it. And the brains of it come in a nice pretty box. I, I promise you, it's so gorgeous. You'll love it. Come by tomorrow. Or just go on our GitHub and you can see wonderful pictures of it because it's extremely well documented. Again, I work with wonderful people. <laughs> or as we say, documentation or it's not a project, right? So, you can then generate a file that the that it will run. And then beyond that, you can edit it. It will talk you through the things that are easy for a human but difficult for a machine to do. There's a touch screen that talks you through it. Then for the machine things where you just need to wait for a long time and regulate the temperature and keep stirring, which are easy for a human to get distracted but great for a machine, it will do those for you. Before that, you need to figure out again, the retrosynthesis, how do you get from point A to point B? A number of years ago, we developed a system that we called Chemhactica. It's a retrosynthesis module where what you can do is literally hop on Wikipedia, look for your drug of choice, scroll down until you find the smiles code. And hackers out there, if you don't know about this, smiles codes are super dope. Invited by the Blue Obelisk group, an open source way that you can represent any chemical or any chemical reaction with an ASCII string is super cool. You copy that, you paste it into Chemhactica, and you say, how do I make this? It will find ways to do it. It does this combinatorially by looking through all of the chemical literature historically, and then it will put the pieces together and find reactions that have already been tested and connect the dots for you and it'll make it as simple as you want. How are we doing? I'm gonna reopen the presentation, I think we're good to go. I yeah, just quick play. Uh, is that the right one? That's the right one? No. Uh, oh, no, no. No, this is not the right one, I see. Yeah, that was okay. my concern. I didn't wanna go poking around your workstation. Thank you, that's all right. Well, let's, let's um, bear with us a moment. Um, dun, 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 boop. All right. Here we go. Maybe. Just last week, I had a guy interview me whose childhood friend, wonderful, thank you, oh. probably. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm just going to sort of forward the slides until it catches up with me. I got interviewed with a guy who told me this heartbreaking story about his childhood friend dying of, I believe it was multiple sclerosis at 25 because she had a very rare subtype and the medicine for that particular subtype because it was so rare 
had been given orphan drug status, which gave it this extended uh, patent length and also allowed for the price point to be whatever they wanted. And it was priced at $850 a day. And she died. And he and I sat down and I shared my screen with him and we went on Chemhaxica and in a matter of minutes, he and I, neither of us chemists, figured out a way to manufacture it for $20 a day. It's that powerful of a tool. Now, that's not to say, of course, that there isn't some chemistry still to be done. You do need to figure some things out. But this gets a huge jump on it. You could potentially find a synthesis mechanism just with this and a good chemist, rather than having a giant team of them work for months. And additionally, this is how we figured out how to make Savaldi. Um, I kind of, it's tempting to skip ahead, but I kind of don't want to touch it. So I'll, I'll keep talking a little bit and see where we are on the clock here. Um, how fragile is this? Where, where'd my guy go? All right, well, I'll just keep pressing the button. So both of these services are live now. The other thing to note about the, uh, is this safe? Yeah, sure. Can I skip down? Yeah, yeah I'm going to unplug it. No, no, just hit escape. It's fine. Okay. And then, uh, and I'm then, right down. You go? Uh, and then I, I can just scroll. Okay. Thank you for bearing with us through this process. I appreciate you all. Oh, right. I was about to do a thing. Okay, cool. So here we go. Yeah, I, I, I guess I kind of gave it away, didn't it? All right, but here we go. All right, here's Daniel O'Day huh, lying to Congress about Savaldi. And I think I have time to take exception to his pricing structure. And my hacker friends, I have a question for you. Should I call him? All right, now don't everybody call him at once, you'll jam the line. Uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what he has to say. All right, Danny boy. The pipes are calling. Fourth Eve's Vinegar is calling. And we're not pleased with what you've done. So here we go, 415-533-3976. Call him afterwards if he doesn't answer, okay? Let's give this a try. Can you hear this? Can you hear this? Hello? Hi there, Daniel O'Day, please. Uh, who's calling? Uh, this is Dr. Michael Laufer. Who? Dr. Michael Laufer from the Fourth East Vinegar Collective, please. From the what? Sorry, from, I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm sorry, the connection is bad. Dr. Michael Laufer, I'm calling from Four Thieves. He's expecting my call. He's expecting your call? Uh, yeah. Okay, um, hold on a second. Thank you so much. What? Yep, I'm still here. Hold on. Hold on. Dan? Dan? I still can't understand who you are. I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, Dr. Michael Laufer from the Fourth East Vinegar Collective. I'm calling from Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you're, he's expecting your call. Uh, well, can you put me on with him anyway? I don't know. I don't think so. Who's this? Hi there, it's Dr. Michael Laufer. I'm calling from the Four Thieves Vinegar Collective. No, this is a check call. I don't know how you got this number, but please don't call it again. Well, you, you sure you don't want to chat? Hello? <laughs> well, I tried. I was going to invite him down and everything. All right. Moving on. How do you do DIY pharmaceuticals, even if you don't have help? Again, you have to automate the chemistry. You have to deal with the reaction. And oh, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting down on time. So here, again, some of the stuff that I talked about, again, tomorrow at 11 a.m., Creator Stage 2, you can come by and you can get all the detail on this. I'm going to skip down again. 
And uh, but you'll see again if you look in the like side column here, you can see all of these really beautiful pictures of things. But I'll show you just one little bit here. Uh, I'm gonna have to sort of jump back and forth. But here's the uh, here's the micro lab in all its glory, and it's actually doing chemistry here. Ugh, this isn't gonna work. It was uh, this was so slick when I put it together. I apologize. But here at the end, I'll show you this little bit. You have your active pharmaceutical ingredient in the solution in this smaller jar and all you're going to do in the last step of most chemistry is just pour it through a coffee filter. It's as simple as that. And once you do, then you're going to sit there and you're going to let it drip. And all of the impurities flow out and your active pharmaceutical ingredient is left and you just dry out the coffee filter. And there's your drug. Again, come by tomorrow and you'll see this all happen in real time. Um, I already talked through these systems, but again, these are online services that we have, which we will show. Uh, the Recipe Press is a brilliant piece of work. Uh, Chemhactica is a brilliant piece of work, but let me just talk about Savaldi specifically. Here it is rendered in two dimensions. I'm sure you've seen this. For those of you who are chemistry phobic, do not let this bother you. I promise this is simple. Our chemists are brilliant and did the hard work. Here's what the reaction looks like. And the amazing part of this is that it is only one step. So pay attention. This will be very quick. It will only take a moment. Here's what you have. On the right, you will see this ring with fluorines. The fluorines and the oxygen will break off like this and you get that little extra stick that wants to connect to an oxygen and there's that lonely little oxygen on the other side and they're going to make friends and they do it like this. And for those of you with good short term memories you will see that this is indeed the molecule that we were trying to get at the beginning. A single step and you can get this drug. You want to see it in three dimensions? Here you go. Again, the fluorines are the green. The oxygens are the red. You're going to see this piece break off and you're going to see this extra little stick and it wants to come around and a little smooch. And there is Savaldi. Now, eventually, you're going to have to make pills. They just passed a law that make owning a pill press a felony. Hilarious because all you need is something that will press something. I've had people tell me that reloading devices can do this. A simple arbor press will do it too. Say you want a pill mold, you can print one out of resin. Then you take your active pharmaceutical ingredient, you tap it in, you fill it up, you put the plunger in, you press it down, and then you spray it with glitter. <laughs> Why do you spray it with glitter? Well, to put it in the words of one of our chemists, if it doesn't sparkle, it's not my revolution. I know I've put this figure up many times, but it still horrifies me, no matter how many times I see it. This is a commercial Savaldi pill. This is a thousand dollar bill. Now, they're in circulation, not much, but they're around. You can find them. They're mostly collector's items, but you can get them. Grover Cleveland, everybody, a thousand dollars. How ridiculous is this? Now, contrastingly, here's our little pill that we made for three dollars and fifty cents worth of materials. So, Here's a question. Which would you pick? Now, I happen to have one of these pills. What would you pick? The bill or the pill? So, who would take this collector's item? Yeah? All right, come up. Come here. Now, these are actually worth more than $1,000 because they're so rare. There you go. Yours to keep. <laughs> Joke's on you though, it's counterfeit. So you're actually in violation of a whole bunch of laws right now because you took that from me. <laughs> Contrastingly, this is not counterfeit. 
It's pirated. There's a difference. This doesn't try to look like something it's not. This does the exact same thing as the thing that it's trying to be. And it doesn't have to try. This is both chemically and isomorphically identical to anything that you would get in a pharmacy if you had the money. Now, I get this question a lot. Now, of course, the point of all of this is that you don't have to test it. The systems are designed so that all of the care and attention you can get on the front end, and then you don't have to. But we did anyway. Anybody out there who knows how to read a high-performance liquid chromatography readout will see that this is fucking amazing. That spike is perfect. There's only one thing in there. For those of you who don't read these, here's something a little more quantitative, and I will draw your attention to this number. That's the purity. Before you get too impressed, allow me to say, if you were to buy Savaldi in the raw from a chemical supplier, you only get 98%. Again, for those of you who are astute with numbers, you will notice this is an order of magnitude more pure than what you would get if you bought it. Yeah. Where'd my goon go? I need another shot. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Watch this. My team's watching and they're all freaking out right now because I didn't tell them I was going to do this. And I don't even have the hepatitis that I know of. All right, let's keep going. I have five minutes. Want to quote some other superheroes? You'll notice this. Now, this is the fourth time I'm mentioning this. And I mention this because this entire course of treatment can be made for $300 in raw materials. And I happen to have it right here. Now who said they had a friend who was infected with hepatitis? There, was, there were a couple people. Right here? You, come up here. Keep your friend healthy. Keep them safe. Thank you so much. We should be doing this every day. I get this question a lot. I'm going to move on now. Again, if, if you don't differentiate between morality and legality, one of us is in the wrong conference. Again, none of our work scales up. This is worth noting because those of you who are like, wow, he does stuff super cheap. Maybe I could start a business. It won't work. I mean, go nuts, right? But you're going to be wasting it. Talk to a chemical engineer. Scaling chemistry is very difficult. When you do it on a small scale, it's much easier. And additionally, some people are like, oh, that's super exciting. How do I get one? You make it. We don't sell anything. We don't even sell merch. We have a merch page on our website showing you how you can make your own. You've all seen this stamp. This is when an authority figure tells you you're allowed. Now, some people decided this might look cute, but you will never see this on anything ever because we are not an authority figure and we are not telling you what to think or what to do. The only thing that the Four Thieves Vinegar Collective will ever approve is you making your own decisions about your own health. And that we've already approved. So go on and do the thing. I'm running low on time. So I'm going to skip this slide, but we have some more deep ideological ideas that I would rant about if I had more on the clock. Again, come to the biohacking village tomorrow. You'll be able to see everything. This is an American phrase, isn't it? 
I'm gonna add another one from the same genre. And with this, I would like to address the feds out there. And some of the execs from pharmacy have spotted some of you during the day. And I'd like to say the following. I would rather be singing your praises. I would like it much better if you did your work properly so that our work became obsolete and we could go do something else. But until you do, if you would like to stop me, you will have to send assassins. Because so long as you stand between people and the medicines they need due to your greed or your ignorance or your cowardice, I will fight you until I curse you with my dying breath. And when you kill me, it won't matter much. I'm just another human like the thousands who die from your inaction every day. And the other members of Four Thieves will step in to continue the work. And the future members of Four Thieves that are probably sitting right next to you now will come to join them. And the ones far away we haven't even met yet. Because we are fighting for nothing less than our lives. Help is not on the way. I will say this last. My fellow hackers, come join us. And we have one last tool that everyone can use. And you don't need to read anything about it, and you don't need to build anything. The next time a medical officer says you can't have what you need, look them in the eye and say, if you will not help me, I will make this myself because that's the truth. You can. Thank you so much.